Good morning, everybody. Today we are going to be putting bedding in our free stalls here. I say today instead of this morning because it didn't take about two milkings to fill up all these beds with sand. Uh, we just use the skid steer and use the regular bucket and dump sand in there from our sand room over there. So that's what I'm doing this morning. I'm just chasing up the east group into the holding area. It's about four o'clock right now. Milking is getting going and we're just bringing the cows up into the holding area so that we can scrape these alleys and dump some sand in their beds. So you can really see these beds are in need of sand, fill them up. We'd like them to be even with the curb and then slowly go up a little bit but they're quite a bit down now. With that new bed buster tool, uh, the sand is fluffed up a lot more and it's not as hard packed as it was before, which is a good thing, but a bad thing is that the cows kick it out a lot quicker. So we're having to bed a lot quicker after starting to use that bed busting tool. Um, we're happy to bed more often as long as these beds are comfy. sand in there. You call this side of the barn a two row group I guess. One row of beds, two row of beds. I'm able to bed one entire row per milking so I'll do one row on that side, one row on this side. And then this afternoon Dima, our other guy, is going to do the other side on each of the groups. It just takes a little bit too long to do both rows for one milking. The cows will all be milked by the time I finish both rows. So we're only able to get one done. bedded up. Now for the last two weeks or so our Lely Juno has not been working. It cropped out again and I just didn't have time to get it to go again. So we've been manually scraping with this bobcat here and the angle blade on there. So I'm quickly going to push up the last little bit of feed this morning before I go back to the milk and parlor. And that is why we push them up right before we put them back into that group because after they're done milking, by far the majority of the cows go and eat right away. Just something they do. It's kind of like their daily routine. Hey Blink, if you think everybody should subscribe. Just check the calf in bed. There's a new little baby calf in here. I just woke her up. Looks like there's another calf in there. You're not the only one. Well, there was two calves, there's a little red heifer calf in there as well. My mom's gonna be really happy about that. She likes the red ones, so you'll love to see it. No, one of you were supposed to stay in the wheelbarrow so I could dump one in there. What are you guys doing? You're making my life hard. Come on.
an early sunrise. What are you doing? Come on, ladies. You. So that is the first group scraped, milked, and back in their side. Now we're gonna do the second group. We have three fresh cows to milk. A fresh cow is just basically one that just have. And uh, since they're second calf or cows, we want to give them a calcium bolus. Got three of them right there. Those are just like pretty much pure calcium and we're giving those to the cows to prevent them from getting milk fever. Milk fever is bad. We do not want any milk fever. Basically what happens when a cow gets milk fever is when she just calves, maybe 12 hours later, she'll be calcium deficient and she'll go down, her energy will just drop, she'll get super weak and she won't be able to walk around anymore. She'll get cold ears. You'll sometimes see farmers feeling the cow's ear. That's why they're checking if she has milk fever or not. And basically we can prevent it almost 100% with these calcium boluses. I can't even remember the last time we had a cow with milk fever and uh, it's because of these, so. Those fresh cows are still in the maternity straw pack, so we're just gonna sort them out and put them straight into the holding area here. Hey, that's nice. So there's actually four animals in total that are fresh. Three cows and one heifer. We're gonna keep all the colostrum separate, keep it, and then we'll pasteurize it and feed it to the calves. So we do keep the colostrum from the cows and then give it to the calves. So this is how we separate the milk out or the colostrum. Just goes down the regular milk line and into this can here. All of the milk goes in here, a colostrum. We also do the exact same for cows with antibiotics. So just keep it all separate. This is what the colostrum looks like. It's the first milk out of a fresh cow. It's kind of yellower and thicker than regular milk. It's just got a ton of vitamins and nutrients to start that calf off. That's why we keep it and still feed it to the calf. Obviously those ladies, the fresh cows, they're not the biggest fan of getting those boluses, but it's kind of like taking your vitamins. You don't like doing it, but uh, you know it's better off for you. They definitely would prefer to have that, the bolus, than getting milk fever, and that's why we give it. When we were grabbing the close-up cows out of the straw pack here, uh, you guys saw her placenta fall off, and then that's this bag of skin. That's literally the bag that the calf is in when it's inside the mom. Sometimes it'll stay hanging on the cow, but it's awesome when you see it just falling like that. You want that off of the cow because if it stays on there for too long, she could get an infection in there. But that heifer fell right off on the video. Awesome. Fun fact too, sometimes you'll see cows eating their own placentas. That thick piece of skin, they'll actually literally eat this entire thing. It's insane. That's kind of like an instinctual thing that the cow does. They kind of just feel like they gotta go and eat that thing, I guess, because it's not really their typical diet. But uh, there's a tons of vitamins and nutrients in that placenta that they can eat and then turn into colostrum, which is what we feed to the calves. So, pretty cool process.
this cow behind me here, she just had a little heifer calf and she's a pretty big cow. So my sister Miriam, she saw her lay down right away after she calved and that's sometimes a sign that maybe there's a twin in there. So I'm just gonna feel inside, make sure there's no other calves in there. If there is a twin in there, it's got a timer on it that's ticking away and we gotta make sure we pull that calf out right away, otherwise it could die in there. So we're just gonna feel in there right away. So we got the cow in a headlocker here. I already put iodine on my hands. And yes, I feel some legs. So there is another calf in here. Good job, Miriam. <laughs> um, it's facing this way, which is a good thing. The calf's still alive. It's still in the sack, so we'll try and pull it out. up to do but uh, he's gonna be fine so thanks to my little sister who's filming right now she saw that and uh, she was right there was a twin in there so so that was pretty cool we pulled that twin off there the first calf was a heifer calf the second calf was a bull calf uh, so we'll just raise them both as steers that's what you typically do it's a mixed gender calving then a lot of the time if there's a heifer calf uh, her reproductive organs are messed up, so she won't be able to get pregnant. So we'll just raise her as a steer, which is fine. They're both still alive, so that's good. As soon as that umbilical cord is broken, that calf's got to get out of there. And that's why a lot of the time when you have twins, one can die more often than not, or both of them. So you kind of can tell, you know, it's a small calf, big cow, that doesn't really make sense. So then you go and check, you feel inside, and sometimes you'll feel a second calf in there. So then you can just pull it out. It usually comes out really easily and um, came out pretty easily today. But uh, that is going to be it for today's video, guys. If you enjoyed, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. Check out the Instagram at SaskDutchKid. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.